Hi friends, welcome back to ARC Tutorials. This is JavaScript Top 100 Interview Question Answer Series with Complete Code Snippets. I am sure and confident that if you go through these 100 interview question answer series, you will be able to answer most of your questions, especially when you are attending on JavaScript interview. Let's get started. Before we jump start, make sure that you get your copy of the full stack interview question answer series and this entire pack of 30 technologies with 2200 question answers with code snippets. All these technologies that are listed here are covered. All the interview question answers with code snippets are available so that you can crack any interview on any of these tech stacks. This is a once in a lifetime buy that you would do and please do yourself a favor by getting this for learning for interview preparation. You can get all the PDFs of the in full stack at arctutorials.gumroad.com. Make sure you get your copy today. All right, let's start with the question number one on JavaScript top 100 interview question answer series. What are closures in JavaScript? A closure is a function that retains access to its lexical scope even when the function is executed outside that scope. It may sound little uh, tricky, but the way you should look at is it you are defining a function and then inside the return you have you are returning a function basically, right? So whenever your function is called, right, and you can directly call it outside through its lexical scope. Okay, that's the most important part about, about closures. So remember, a closure is a function that retains access to its lexical scope even though function is executed outside that scope. Now whenever you create an instance of this function increment and then call it, this will print the value of plus one because it's getting returned, right? So that is what is called a closure. One of the very, very, um, one of the most important things that they ask. Now the next is what is the difference between null and undefined. So null represents an intentional absence of any object value. Okay, that means there is no value. Undefined represents an uninitialized variable or a variable that has been declared but it doesn't have a value. Okay, so in this case if you say let a and print console log a it will give you undefined. Whereas b is a value. Null is also a value. That means it's an intentionally left empty value. Okay, remember that. If you try to print some variable which is not defined, you'll get undefined. If you print a value, if you print a variable which does not have any value, it will still give you undefined. Whereas null is a value. So remember that. What are var, let and constant JavaScript? Where these are the different levels of scope um, that you have in terms of how the variable can be accessed can be modified okay when you use var keyword that means it's a function scope wherever it is declared or globally if you are just writing a script where where variables can be reassigned okay remember that let is a block scope which means it will work <coughs> wherever it is defined in that scope again it can be reassigned const is a block scope but it cannot be reassigned that means you cannot change the value of const you can change the value of let but you cannot redefine it where can be redefined and reassigned remember that well very very important const x equal to 10 can be reassigned can be redeclared if you write where x equal to 20 it will still work but you cannot write let y equal to again something it will give you error but you can give y equal to 30 that you can reassign const you cannot reassign you cannot redeclare that's the difference between where let and const what is the this keyword in javascript very very important uh, thing the this keyword refers to the context in which a function is called it will be scoped inside whichever function it is called. It can refer to the global object, the object that owns the method or an explicitly bound object using call, apply or bind. Now in this case, 
if you see this when you write it's only inside this function okay not outside so this can be used in different references different way but remember it's a scope basically which is in the context of that particular function or that particular class <coughs> explain the concept of promises in JavaScript a promise is an object representing the eventual completion or failure of an asynchronous operation remember whenever we talk about promises it is talking about asynchronous code execution okay now whenever we talk about asynchronous code it has two states either it will be resolved or it will be rejected so now there are three things that you have to understand one is pending fulfilled and rejected so whenever you resolve a promise you will resolve it with a resolve or a reject okay so and then you will write promise dot then you can catch the error or display the message whatever comes but remember promises are used with asynchronous code in order to wait for certain thing to solve to now it can be two states it can either resolve or it can be rejected when you make a successful API call you get the data you resolve it if you don't get the data you can reject it and say operation failed or API failed etc what is the event loop in JavaScript the event loop is a mechanism in JavaScript that handles asynchronous operations it checks the call stack and processes messages from the message queue. Now take a look here. When you do this console.log, it will first come, execute first, then execute third, and then go with execute second. Okay? Because either you are doing a set timeout. Okay? That means it handles asynchronous operations. It will check the sequence and then execute that in the sequence. That thing is called event loop in JavaScript. What is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous code? Synchronous means it executes sequentially, like step by step, blocking the program until each task is completed. Whereas asynchronous code means it will execute independently of the program, which means it will come it will it will not wait for other tasks it will continue executing will come back to it once that task is finished okay again take a look at here synchronous means console.log start end it will first print start then print end in asynchronous it will print start then it will print end and once this time is delayed then it will print the message delayed that means it was not waiting for this while it is executing independently it will execute only when this thing is resolved okay that's the most important thing what are javascript uh, data types javascript has both primitive and reference data types primitive includes just like any other programming language string number boolean null undefined begint these are all the different primitive data types now what about the reference ones reference ones includes object array function these are the different reference data types but they are not primitive so remember if they ask you what are primitive you have to say that it is string number boolean null undefined but if they talk about reference data types it will be object array function and others what is a javascript callback function <coughs> A callback function is a function that is passed on to another function as an argument to be executed later. Now remember, whenever we are doing a callback, that means here you are calling greeting, correct? The function, we have created a function called greeting and console.log hello. And inside this we are having one more function which is called callback. Now when I call this greeting and this is the function that will be executed. So I'm passing another function as an argument that's the way you will explain it you have to say that a callback function <coughs> is a function that is passed to another function as an argument to be executed later <coughs> what is the difference between double equal to and triple equal to double equal to means compares the values perform performing type coercion means that it will not 
check for the type if you put 1 equal to 1 in double quotes prob like here if you put 2 equal to equal to double quotes 2 it is still true though this is number this is string but if you put triple equal to it will check for the data type as well that's why here it will fail because this is a number this is a string very very important especially when you're writing code as well remember double equal to will only check for the value will only compare the value triple equal to will compare the value along with the data type what is hoisting in javascript hoisting in javascript's default behavior of moving all declarations to the top of the current scope before code execution now always remember this is something that you will find in lot of legacy code if you are working that some of the variables are defined below and then they are called at the top right if they are in a function or something that's a different thing but you cannot access a variable before it's defined that is called hoisting in javascript what is the difference between apply call and bind in javascript call calls a function basically with a specified this value and arguments are passed individually apply is a function with specified this value and arguments are passed as an array remember that's the difference between call and apply both will call a function but in call you will pass the arguments individually in apply you pass them as an array bind bind always returns a new function with specified value and initial arguments take an example here you have the function greet which is just printing a hello and this name now when you are calling this greet dot call and you're passing an object with value which is alice now here it would just take an individual argument that is call apply will always take it as an array whereas bind will be binding it and returning a new function which you can call and execute it with the initial values whatever values were passed okay i hope it's clear very very important so make sure you go through these again what are arrow functions in javascript arrow functions are a short shorter syntax for writing functions they do not have their own this value and inherit this from the surrounding context which means here this this is a shorter way of writing function function name cur bracket function brackets then curly brace open curly brace closed etc if you have just one line of logic you can just write the arrow functions they are just shorter shortcut to write but again you cannot write this dot and all that since they don't have the scope binded okay so the question can also be where do you use arrow functions you can use arrow functions wherever you have only one or two lines of code which you want to quickly update okay immediately you want to change what is the spread operator in javascript the spread operator is used to expand elements in an iterable that means it's like an array or an object now you can use that to spread you can use it to club and you can use it to merge and do much more things with the spread operator okay you can use it as a function passing of when you don't know how many arguments you want to pass <clears throat> so the usage are different that is that that's when it is called rest operator but in this case we are talking about spread operator so which is nothing but it will expand the elements in an array or an object so here you have an array you're saying dot 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 array comma four comma five that means you're expanding this array here so it is one two three four five now what is the rest parameter in javascript like i was talking about the syntax may look same just like spread operator but it is used in a different context the rest parameter is used to collect all the remaining arguments passed to a function into an array when you don't know how many arguments you want to pass it can be one it can be two it can be three it can be hundred anything that's where you'll use dot 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 numbers that means you don't know how many arguments it can be one it can be two it can be hundred that's where you'll use the rest parameter so you'll then do rest dot whatever operation you want to do either a loop it or take that value and process it what are template literals in javascript template literals allows for string interpolation and multi-line strings using backticks 
Now this is a much better way of writing the messages instead of doing concatenation of strings, then comma separate, then adding value and all that. We'll use template literals. We use it with backtick, type the string, then put dollar sign, then curly brace open, curly brace closed. Inside this, you can directly type the name of the variable with the value. It will come. <coughs> what is destructuring in JavaScript? Destructuring allows us to unpack values from arrays or properties from objects into distinct variables. That means if you have an object like this person named Alice, age 25. Now you can just do a destructuring like this and say extract name, comma, age from person. This is called destructuring in JavaScript. You basically unpack the values from either array or objects into, into distinctive variables. <coughs> all right, that's all for uh, today's episode, but make sure that you get your PDF copies of full stack. This is a one time lifetime investment you will do. You will get over 30 technologies, all the technologies that are listed here for UI developer, mean stack, MERN stack, backend developer, databases, testing, contracts, agile, all of that with detailed code snippets at arctutorials.gumroad.com. If you have any doubts, write to me at surya.aradhya at gmail.com and I'll see you in the next part. Thank you so much for always supporting and encouraging me. Thank you.